Hello, and welcome to St. Mark AME Church. We are thrilled that you have gathered with us today for our digital worship experience. Make sure that you are subscribed to our site so that you know every time that we post. Get ready for a message from the Lord. Have a great service. Praise the Lord, saints. Let us look to God in prayer. Our Father, our Father, we love the Heavenly Father being able to call your name. Lord, for we know that all our help and all the love we need comes from you. Lord, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would just let us feel your loving arms surrounding us, the Heavenly Father, letting us know, Lord, that this storm that we're in, it too shall pass. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to you today just to give your name the honor and the glory and the praise to Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask that you would bless each and every one listening to this word today to Heavenly Father. Lord, and if there is one to Heavenly Father that may not know you for themselves to Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that there's someone in their midst to Heavenly Father that will help them to know what they must do to be saved to Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask today, Lord, that all those that are preaching and teaching around the world to Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that all all the things that they're saying and doing to Heavenly Father are pleasing in your sight to Heavenly Father and that is coming from on high. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to praise you in these uncertain times to Heavenly Father. But we know, Lord, that one thing is for certain, that you are the true and living God. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. And we just say right now, Lord, thank you for all that you've done and all the things that you're doing to Heavenly Father and all the things that are to come. For it's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer and we all say, Amen. Hello, today I will be reading Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Again, I will be reading Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, much more than having now been justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Thank you once again for joining us here at St. Mark AME Church for our digital worship service. We pray that something in this message today will be able to help and to strengthen you with whatever you're going through in your life. God continues to bless us even in spite of the storms that we have seen on the horizon and that we are in the midst of. Remember God is faithful. He promised that he would never leave us nor would he forsake us. And this message today comes from the book of Romans, chapter number five. And we will be uh, rereading this verse, verse number eight. It says this, but God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us pray. Father, thank you once again for this opportunity to come to share with your people. We thank you for all that you continually do in our lives. Now give us the strength, O God, and hide us behind the cross that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the people of God say, Amen. I want to share with you from a subject, dying to show his love. Dying to show love. His love. What an ultimate sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ made to show his love toward us. 
by dying. And we may think of that as, wow, that's impactful. But it's more impactful than you can even imagine. Because it was not just for you or for me, but it was for the entire world. And sometimes I think that we go through the things that we go through is because we really can't understand how much God really loves us. Yes, he really does love us in spite of, and that's a blessing in and of itself. Now, we see love sometimes differently because we place conditions on it. Oh, if you give me this, if you show me this, if you do this a certain way, then I'll love you. Or if I receive something from you, I know it must mean that you love me. Or if you treat me a certain way at a certain time, I know you must love me. But love is not something that should have to be forced on anyone. It should just be. And we thank God that he loved us enough to be able to give of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to allow him to go to the cross so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I really didn't understand and know what love was all about. And sometimes we seek love through things and through trying to please other people instead of just recognizing that God loves us in spite of us trying to do all these different things. We may have resentment toward others and be unable to love them because of we have placed false expectations on what we think they should do to show us love. And we most of the time base this on things of the world. But we, we cannot be transformed if we form and conform to the things of the world. As the word tells us, we got to be renewed not by the world, but we've got to be renewed by the things of God. Because if we conform ourselves to this world, then we'll start to behave and to act like this world. You can see it now. All you have to do is turn on the news channels and you can see that a lot of the devastation and destruction and the demoralization of human beings is happening because we have conformed to the thinking of the world and not to the things of God. God did not mandate that we hate and destroy one another. That's something that comes of the world and it's not of God. I love this text because one thing that I've seen in it and that has always been important to me is the fact not only did Jesus die on the cross, not only did he take upon him all of my sins, but he also brought back into right relationship, that relationship between us and God. He restored something that had been broken, that had been shattered in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve sinned, that caused a separation between mankind and God. And I'm grateful that that relationship was restored through the persons of Jesus Christ. In other words, he bridged a gap that was missing in my life. And he's done the same for countless others. There's times in our lives where we feel that we're unloved, that nobody cares about us, that we're just trying to make it on our own and there's nothing there to support us. And you may see it that way and you may see nobody comes along beside me or when I faced this, I was all alone. But truly, brothers and sisters, you are never alone because the Lord has always been watching out for us. He's always been there for us. Even in the midst of tragedy, God is still present. And Jesus Christ was willing to sacrifice himself so he could take away our sins and bring us back into right relationship with God the Father. We're sometimes overwhelmed 
by the things that happen in this life. And it's very easy for that to happen. One of the things that I've learned through this pandemic is relationships really do matter. Not just relationships with people that I'm in contact with on a daily or even a weekly basis, but I'm talking about relationships that I formed years ago in grade school, in high school, you know, in the military, in my various jobs, you know, in my career, people that have been impactful in my life, their relationships were strained sometimes because of distance, but most of the time because we fail to keep in contact with one another. And being sheltering in place and having all this time on our hands and really understanding how God himself don't want us to be separated and we're not separated from his love. He said, what can separate us from the love? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I found that reaching out to some of those people and, and, and contacting, you know, family members and even friends um, that we haven't had close relationships in years, that restor restoration and that reconciliation began to happen. And you learn how to appreciate one another and the importance of having relationships with one another. Tremendous sacrifice that Jesus Christ made that we may be able to live this life reconciled to God, but not only reconciled to God, but reconciled to our brothers and to our sisters. But if we hesitate and we start to focus on everything that's going on around us, sometimes we'll miss what the Lord has already done for us. Aren't you glad that Jesus sees us? He does not overlook us. He actually sees us. Now, it can be said that we can say, well, people don't really see me. They don't see the accomplishments that I've made. They don't see the significance of my life. That's because they don't have the love of Christ. And if they say they have the love of Christ and still treat you like they don't see you, like you don't matter, then they're living under false pretenses. Because if you have the love of Christ, you see humanity. You see one another. Jesus saw us. Saw us in the conditions that we're in and knew that we needed to be reconciled to God. Because it was a broken relationship because of sin. Sin has not gone away. It's still rampant in our society today. We see it in all of the isms that we have, classism, racism, the political isms that separate us, black, white, brown. We separate ourselves in all these different categories and it breaks the relationship that I know that God intended for us to have with one another. The mandate is on us to reconcile ourselves to God and then to humanity. Jesus made it so easy for us to be able to do by his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. He took the bruises. He took the beatings. He shed the blood so that we could have an abundant and a restore of life. He did that for us. So there's no reason, brothers and sisters, to go around shedding the blood of innocence on the streets and in our communities. It's not necessary to take someone's humanity and dignity away because God already died to remove us from the pains of sin. He's given us life and that life more abundantly. But if we continue to operate in sin, then we keep ourselves separated from God. But there is a reconciliator. There is a way that we can make 
things right. And that's through Christ Jesus. Because he loves us. And the word tells us in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone be in Christ, they're a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Today is the day. Things need to be new. If ever a time in history where old things need to pass away, it is now. Old attitudes and practices need to go away and things need to be new. And the way you start that, no more excuses, no more failure to stand up or to speak up, no more living to please someone else or going along to get along. Why? Because we cannot let the sins of this world overshadow what Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. We are and we can be better while we are in the midst of our sins, he died for us. That we may be free from that, to reconcile, to bring back in right relationship between us and God. And if we have reconciled ourselves to God, then we know the love of God. And if we know the love of God, then sin should not cover our hearts to do senseless and violent things to one another. We are brothers and sisters. We are loved of God. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, a willing sacrifice. But let's not forget John 3, 17, for he came not into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now is the time. To receive Christ into your life. To be saved. Reconcile to God the Father through the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ the Son. So that we can go and be bold and restore relationships with one another. Beyond the hate, beyond the resentment, beyond the pain, we can receive Jesus. And we can begin to remove into that reconciliation process with our brothers and our sisters, our moms and our, our dads, our co-workers, our siblings, our communities, and other races. We can move into that moment of reconciliation where the love of God is in us and we can share it with one another. Now is the time when there's so much wrong and so much hate going on. Love can overcome it. But not just any kind of love, the love of Christ. The love that was willing to sacrifice everything that we may have a life and have it more abundantly. Nothing can separate us from his love. And it's available right now to each and every one of us. Stop hating. Stop troubling others because you're not happy. Receive Christ because he's already received you unto himself by dying so that your sins could be forgiven. Your sins, my sins, the whole world's sins. He showed us that he was dying to show his love. Are you willing to die for anything? Are you willing to die to show your love for one another? To sacrifice it all? so that you can restore relationship. 
There's a veil of the temple was torn in two. Now it's time to tear down the institutionalized things of man and to reconcile ourselves to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that restores right relationship with God. He was dying to show his love. What are we dying to do? Amen. We pray that something in this message today touched you right where you are. We pray that if you have not given your life to Christ, you would take the opportunity to join me in this prayer and just simply repeat this. Lord Jesus, I come right now knowing that I am a sinner saved by your grace. Come into my life right now, Lord. I accept you as my Savior. I will live my life pleasing unto you. And by receiving you, Lord, I know my relationship with the Father has been restored. Save me now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time, please stay tuned on how you can contact us here at St. Mark so we can walk through with you this victory as you have joined the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, may God be with you throughout this week in everything that you do. And may you always know and understand that God himself was dying to show you his love. God keep you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. What a mighty word from the Lord. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior for the very first time, we want to pray with you. Please use the contact information on the screen and someone from St. Mark AME will reach out. Also, don't forget, we are still continuing to praise the Lord in this digital world. We still have our prayer calls on Tuesday, our weekly Bible study on Wednesday at 7 p.m., and then our church school on Sunday morning. Why don't you join us? Finally, if you would like to continue to support this ministry through our donations or through tithes and offering, please visit our website and click the donate tab. We had a great time worshiping with you today. I hope that you all have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen.